YouTube, it's Missy, and last week was the underhyped readathon for Goodreads, and I did participate in it. I planned on reading seven books, but I had lots of family days where we went to the beach, and so I only read four, but they were some really good books that I read. I'm really, really excited that I was able to get through any of the books. So the first book that I read is a graphic novel or actually it's a comic because each chapter is its own issue and that is Rocket Girl. The main character's name is Dae Young and or Dae Young. She's from 2013 which is the future and her sole purpose is to fix the past which is 1986. Something went down and because of that something, it made the, the present, which is her future, change dramatically. And so this is a science fiction uh, comic. It's very colorful, very pretty to look at. The, uh, the story itself was kind of meh. I, I like science fiction, but this was just, you know, not my cup of tea. It was just about a girl who works for the... New York Police Department as a teen um, in 2013 they have a teen police department and then when you hit 20 you are able to switch over to a like secret service kind of thing for whatever uh, town they live in and it doesn't really explain the city that they live in if it's widespread or if it's just one town because if you've watched Demolition Man it's kind of like that and kind of definitely not like that so Anyways, it was kind of confusing, but also pretty to look at, so I liked the drawings mostly. The next book that I read was Elizabeth George's The Edge of Nowhere, and this was awesome. This is a mystery set on an island outside of Washington State. Becca King is the protagonist, and she is in hiding. Um, her step father is trying to get a hold of her and her mom and so her mom hides her away at this island and disappears to go you know look for work or whatever um, when she gets to the island however the person that she's supposed to stay with dies of a heart attack I know it sucks for her and she's 14 going on 15 so she doesn't have that much money with her she doesn't have you know any other people that she knows on this island and so she has to just make do with the strangers that she meets and everything is crazy after that happens a boy gets hurt and is in a coma and she doesn't want to be held responsible for this because she is the one who called it in but she wants to stay hidden but she wants to help out and there's just a lot of like inner island drama that goes on to find out who hurt this boy and why he is in a coma. Along with all of that, there is a hidden message where she is actually able to hear voices, like people's thoughts. And even though that that is part of the book, the author doesn't make it a huge thing. Like, it's not all about, oh, she can hear voices. It's about, you know, everything that's happening on the island. The That kind of paranormal part of the storyline is not focused on which is nice because you get to see the, the mystery and she doesn't use it very often she actually interacts with people so it's not just her listening in to others and you know going from there I'm doing a really crappy job at explaining this book I will leave all of my Goodreads review links down below so you can check out because I always write my reviews way better than I can speak them because I have time to reflect whereas when I come up on camera I get nervous and then you know how it is but anyways this was a really great book I do have the second book in the series and I'm actually starting to read it now I'm only on page 30 but so far so good 
The next book that I read during the readathon was The In Between by Barbara Stewart. This book I won on a giveaway on Goodreads. I didn't read it until now, which it came out, I believe, in November of 2013. So I'm really sad that I only now actually read it, but it was really, really good. And it wasn't even that long. It was only 248 pages. So in this book, Eleanor Moss is, I believe, 15? And she gets in a car accident with her mom and dad on the way to a new house. It's supposed to be their new beginning in this life. You know, they were trying to escape what happened in the past and look forward to the future. And they get in a car accident and one of her parents dies. During that time, she's also at the hospital recuperating from this accident and things get a little blurry at this point. There are three books, I believe, in this one where the first chapter you get to uh, deal with her and her dad and the second chapter it's her and her mom and I don't want to go into too much more information on that because it'll kind of like give it away but basically while she's recuperating at the hospital she meets a girl named Madeline. Madeline is like the best thing that could have happened to Eleanor or Ellie and she just falls in love with this girl not romantically but she just wants to be her and be with her at all times and um it's it, that's what her story is it's basically her and madeline and you get to see their dynamic and what comes about i would like to say that she is obsessed to the point of like creepiness with madeline because she wants to own her and that's what kept me going in this book. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so crazy. Like who really wants to be with someone that much and like is so fanatical about it. But regardless, this book was really, really good and it does have a paranormal twist to it. So if you guys want to check this out, I definitely would. The last book that I read during the Underhyped Readathon was Rain Village. I know a lot of you said that this cover was really beautiful and it totally is. And the story within it is as beautiful as the cover, which makes me excited because sometimes you do cover buys and you're hoping that the book is really good and then ends up being a flop but the cover's beautiful. This was not the case. This book was as pretty as the cover. This book is about Tessa Riley. She is a little person. It was such a good book. Tessa Riley lives in Kansas with her mom, dad, two brothers, and her sister. They all live on a farm. And Tessa, being a little person, can't help out in the fields. So she's stuck inside all the time, bored. Her parents always look down upon her. Her mom calls her a freak. Her sister and brothers laugh at her. And she's not only, you know, the freak of her house, but the freak of the town. Nobody um, is nice to her. And then all of a sudden, one day, this lady steps in and comes like Mary Poppins into the city. Mary Finn is her name. And she is now the new librarian for their local library. She is just amazing. She's beautiful and she's smart and she has all these wonderful stories and she takes a liking to Tessa and really brings her in and teaches her things that Tessa never would have known before. She teaches her how to read. She teaches her how to, you know, work a, a, a library and um, enjoy life, whereas Tessa never did. She, you know, just thought that her life was going to be miserable because she didn't matter to her family or her town. And Mary changes all that. And that's all I'm going to say about it because when I went into this book, I didn't know that it was about a little person. I didn't know what Mary's background was going to be. I didn't read the inside flap and that kind of describes what Tessa ends up doing in the future when she grows up. And I don't wanna talk about that because that's what made the book so brilliant. So just know that this is an amazing um, coming of age story which is has a me magical realism attached to it. It's mysterious and dramatic and um, I gave it 4.5 stars on Goodreads only because some of the things that she said was kind of repetitive, you know, talking about Mary. But overall, this was such an amazing story. It takes place, like I said, in Kansas. 
there's little bits of it in Mexico, and it doesn't really describe where Rain Village is, but I think it's like Oregon, Washington area, and um, just an amazing, amazing book. This is by Caroline Turgeon. You must read this book, and it's not even that long. It's only 327 pages. Definitely check it out. So that was it. Those were my three books, well, including the comic that I read, the three main books that I read during the Underhyped Readathon. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. If you guys participated, I want to know what you read during the Readathon and if you got through all of the books that you were planning on reading. And I will talk to you soon. Have a wonderful week. Bye.